You are tuning in to the human side of engineering and product development podcast, brought to you by Sarah Tech, where we bring you industry leaders and some of the brightest minds in engineering solutions and product development. I'm Andy Deal, your host. Join me as we discover the inspiring stories of the people behind the most innovative and game-changing solutions in the market today. So tune in and enjoy. Good morning and welcome to our podcast. With me today is Dr. Arian Kabir, one of the co-founders of Gray Matter Robotics, uh, located in Los Angeles, California. Um, Arian, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Andy. Great to be here. Uh, so, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about Gray Matter Robotics and, and um, your company and, and what do you guys do? Yeah, sounds good. So, we are an AI robotics company located in Southern California. We are venture-backed and growing at, growing at a very rapid pace. Our focus is on manufacturing as, a, as our customer base or as our domain. We are focusing on high mix, high variability applications in the manufacturing space, and we combine commercially available robot sensors and tools with our proprietary AI technologies and turn them into smart robotic assistants that can help these manufacturers in high mix, high variability environment. Particularly, currently we are focused on surface finishing and surface treatment applications. These are applications such as sanding, polishing, buffing, grinding, painting, coating, etc different tool-in-hand operations. And all these operations are dependent on manual labor today. And as the baby boomers are retiring and younger generations are coming to the workforce, we're seeing a massive decline in the workforce for these applications. The reason being, these are extremely tedious and ergonomically challenging operation. You can imagine wearing a Tyvek suit, sweating in more than 100 degree Fahrenheit, 10 to 12 hours every day of your life using a power tool and you know, you try this for two weeks or two months and you decide you want a better quality of life. And as a result, we, we see this big, big decline in the manufacturing workforce. And that's putting the whole economy at a big risk. According to McKinsey, by 2030, due to the shortage of steel labor in manufacturing, the U.S. economy is going to be at a risk of $1 trillion per year. And we are addressing some of those problems by creating smart robotic cells that can help manufacturers adopt technology to address all the variation and variabilities. Essentially, the way the shop floor operators use a robot is that they can bring in a part in front of the system. They can just simply press a button on the touchscreen, just like an iPhone, and the robot autonomously understands, scans the part, figures out the geometry, does the job, and guarantees quality consistency. Okay. Wow. That's, that's very, very cool stuff. Now, how did you and your co-founder come up with the idea for the company? What what was the genesis of that? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. So, um, you know, uh, SK Bruel and I, three of us, co-founded Gray Matter Robotics. Bruel and myself, we did not really have much background in manufacturing prior to 2016. When we moved to USC, I was doing my PhD at that time uh, with SK. And at USC, we were, we were very fortunate to be part of the Center for Advanced Manufacturing. Ah, I see. USC had a great industry-affiliated program. Uh, we had been interacting with large enterprise as well as small and medium-sized businesses on a very regular basis. In one such interaction, a big aerospace company, they were telling us how they are facing challenges to find skilled labor to continue their you know, manufacturing operation and meet the demand. Their demand was, you know, so high compared to their capacity that their lead time was between two to three oh, years. Wow. We were honestly surprised. And they were telling us that they make this multi-million dollar parts and each of them take thousands of hours to process manually. And this, the labor force they have, they keep on leaving the job because they want a better quality yeah. of life. And naturally, we kind of asked ourselves that why can't they use robots? Because we see robots in the automotive industry or electronics industry doing similar applications. And when we started asking those questions, what we realized is that the present day robots, they're very limited in capability. Mm -hmm. You can program them once, they can repeat the same thing again and again and again. 
But as soon as you have variation and variabilities coming from either large number of SKUs or material variation or the manufacturing process itself, you're out of luck. You really have to then spend hundreds or thousands of hours to program robot to address any minor change. So that was the genesis for us to start paying attention into how can we enable robots to program themselves, create AI technologies that can be application specific and enable robots to understand and work and guarantee quality consistency. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still getting over this flu that everybody's been getting lately. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so in a blog that uh, SK wrote, he actually, um, you know, mentioned the, sh the labor shortage crisis and how people entering the workspace do not see manufacturing job as a viable career. Um, do you, do you agree with that? And is, is that a misconception for people to see, Hey, manufacturing is a dead end. I don't, I don't want to do that. What are some of the things that you see in terms of advancement in technologies and, and other um, skilled areas that have opened up in manufacturing that, that, it, it's right. it's not it's, it's not as dire as people think it is. Right. No, that's a that's a that's a great point, Andy. And essentially, I think from you know when you look at manufacturing or think about manufacturing, the common perception is that you know it's very dangerous, it's very dirty, it's very dull. Yeah. Right. However, it's true for certain jobs or certain applications or operations within manufacturing, with the you know new technologies coming in and creating solutions to allow, let's say, robots to take care of the tedious and ergonomical challenging tasks, what's, what's that doing is creating the new opportunity for humans to focus on high-level, higher-valuated tasks and creative decision-making. And manufacturing environments are much, much cleaner as compared to before. Yeah. And especially some of the applications, let's say, we are focusing on at Grim Matter, for example, sanding or gel coat spraying or something like yeah. that, it's very challenging and you really need to use a lot of PPE and you really need high skill to work on that. And that's detrimental to your health. If you're exposed to prolonged period with a power tool or, you know, some, some things similar yep. between two to five years, you could potentially get carpal tunnel, shoulder and back injury, sometimes respiratory challenges yep. and whatnot. Yep. So those are the applications or tasks that we see are suitable for robots Whereas the human operators, essentially with the advent of new technologies, the human operators are now up, you know, upskilling themselves and going into higher level decision making, higher level valuated operations. So I, I do believe that manufacturing is a great place for work. Yeah. And I do believe there's this big generational shift that's coming in. That's, that's a really good point, you know. Um, now, speak of misconceptions, I mean, obviously, you have a PhD in robotics, AI, and control. And, you know, a lot of people, and me included sometimes, you know, you, you see Hollywood movies and, and you see robot <laughs> and AI do these crazy <laughs> things. And people are like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of AI. They're going to take over the world. Robots going to dominate and control us and things like that. You know, what, what are some other misconceptions that, that people have about uh, robots and, and AI in general? Right. No, I mean, that's a, I would say that's a popular media misconception, yes. right? Because even if you think about it, the, you know, whenever it comes to a Zoom call or setting up our audio video in a conference room, we always struggle. Yeah. So we have this, you know, <laughs> dull challenges. And on the other hand, we're worried about, you know, AI taking control and all that. We are so far, far, far behind in the technology, yeah. right? From any, any form of general intelligence. So what I see is that, you know, uh, in near term future, what, what we can really contribute is by creating application specific solutions, really focused solution by leveraging AI and robotics that can essentially help humans to enhance their capability, empower humans and focus on higher value added tasks. One, one example I can give you. So one of the software operator mm -hmm. uh, from one of our customer site, he used to do sanding by hand before. After three weeks, after, you know, our robot went into their place and he became the robot operator in some sense. After three weeks, when one of our engineers went back to their site, 
and was asking him about his feedback, about the system, etc. He, what he told him was very powerful. What he told him was that he can now go back home. So he was thanking our engineers. Thank you for mm. making this technology. I can now go back home, lift up my daughter, and my arms don't hurt anymore at the end of the day. And those are some profound impacts of these advanced technologies. That's, that's really powerful. I mean, when, when we think about it, um, you know, work is one thing. But being able to enjoy life, enjoy your family, and and right. you know have other part of your life affected by work, right. that's that's not a good thing, right? Uh, in a negative right. way. Um, another interesting thing that I that I uh, saw that you guys are offering is uh, the concept of robot as a service. So nowadays, right. I mean, you you see that on the software side, you see that on you know, storage, server side, AWS, things like that. So ro robot as a service is a very interesting concept to me. How did you think of that? And, and what are some of the advantages of, of having um, robot as a service? No, that's a great question, Andy. So if you look at automation in general, it used to be extremely capital intensive. You have to spend and budget millions of dollars before you even know whether that solution or technology is going to work for you or not. And there are many horror stories where someone, you know, was very excited to adopt robot and automate certain processes. They tried that and they failed even after spending millions of dollars. That created certain, you know, uh, bad experiences. On top of that, if you look at, you know, any manufacturing space, whenever it comes to this new technology, they want an assurance that it will work for them. They want an assurance that it's going to fit right in in their workplace. They want an assurance this is not just going to be one time as they change their manufacturing processes or workflow, this can evolve with their processes. Mm -hmm. And I believe the subscription model or robot as a service model is really facilitating all those. In the robot as a service model, you have zero upfront cost. It's a zero risk adoption if you are the end user. It's on, let's say, Grim Matter or any other company that's providing robot as a service. It's on them to guarantee that we are going to meet all the KPIs and we're going to make this successful at the facility, at the manufacturing site. And then when it's working, essentially, you are paying for the system or the solution, just like you'd be paying for your human operators. Essentially, you're, you're hiring robots for the job as opposed to hiring people because you can't really find people mm -hmm. and you don't have to wait for you know several years to allocate budget and go through the planning and all that you can really commit to it and you can try at a small scale and expand as your operation grows and robot as a service really allows that it guarantees the uptime it guarantees the you know the maintenance service longevity of the, all the equipment it guarantees all the software support and services it guarantees continued remote and on-site support and training, uh, that overall package really facilitates bringing in new technology adoption in the manufacturing space. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, when I first saw it, I was like, you know, that's a great idea, robot as a service, because, you know, it, it, it cuts so much uh, of the cost that would be involved to just to right. get into the game, right, in terms of robotics. Right. Yeah. Um, and speaking of labor shortage, obviously COVID-19 has a lot to do with it. Now, interestingly enough, your timing, you started the company in the beginning of 2020, right before all the lockdown and, and, the, and the massive, you know, uh, COVID hit. Um, first of all, obviously you didn't see that coming. Um, and, and when all that happened, did you freak out? And you're like, what the heck did we do? I mean, how are we going to deal with this? How did you deal with it, with that? No, to be honest, Andy, we were, you know, we have been fortunate, first of all. When COVID, we started the company at the very you know, beginning of COVID and then, you know, the COVID peak surged. Yeah. We were, we were scared, honestly, because, you know, we, we were first time founders yeah. starting a new company uh, with new technologies and solutions and approaching a market or essentially creating a new market. And we were really scared that how are we going to navigate all that? However, what has COVID done is that really helped everyone understand and embrace 
the concept of automation and the need mm -hmm. to realize the big need for automation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what has it done also is, you know, helped humans and people like help people to think about what am I doing with my life and how should I be contributing and how can I, you know, have a better quality of life yes. and contribute in a meaningful way. Yes. And that has created a big shift in the workforce on the interest or the kind of jobs people want to pursue. Right. And that in turn has created a much larger void in the, you know, manufacturing workspace where especially in the space of TDS and ergonomically challenging tasks that humans should not be doing in the first place. Right. So in some sense, COVID overall, not just in the US, but worldwide, pushed forward the concept of automation and the you know, pull towards embracing automation. And that in turn has also you know, enabled us to help all these manufacturers, essentially help them to start building the backbone of their manufacturing processes and you know, essentially building the whole backbone of the economy and helping people to have a better quality of life. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. I, I think that is very true during COVID. People, a, a lot of people, you know, sat down and evaluated what they're doing and say, hey, you know, is, is this something I really want to do? Uh, is this something I'm passionate about? You know, um, I, I, I think that's that's a very key question that everyone should ask themselves. Is this something that I'm passionate about? Am, am I doing something right. that is contributing to the betterment of society, of, of, of technology, of, of people, you know. Um, so I, I think I think that's a very poignant point that you made there. Um, now, three years in, um, did anything surprise you at all about starting a, a tech company? I mean, was it what you thought it would be? Uh, are, are there some, some moments when you say, oh, wow, I had no idea that this was going to happen, things like that? That's that's our everyday life, Andy. <laughs> so <laughs> every day we learn something new. Yeah. So you know, it it has been a very exciting and rewarding journey so far, and especially you know when we see that uh, the meaningful contribution we are making towards both like improve, helping to improve the quality of human lives, yes. as well as helping to build that backbone of economy, it's it's extremely rewarding. And to be honest, when we started, we did not even know what are the different you know, problems will be solving or what mm -hmm. are the different, you know, uh, markets and industry verticals where we can, you know, really help and make an impact. And yeah. now when we, when we look back, we see that we are helping this vast range of industries, anything from aerospace defense to specialty vehicles like buses, trains, trucks, marine and boat industry, recreational industries, and some other general manufacturing. So across the whole space, we do see that we have the opportunity to contribute in a meaningful way and essentially help them elevate their journey. And that has been an extremely rewarding journey for all of us. And the technologies that the whole team is working on, this is something completely new that has that was never done before. Mm -hmm. So we, we have been very fortunate to have an audacious team who are breaking the boundary every single day. That's that's exciting. Uh, it's It's fun to be in the forefront of technology and, and be, you know, the, in, in the leadership, leadership position of, of creating something exciting and new. Um, speaking of your team, I know that you guys are hiring people like crazy, having, I mean, obviously with, with the people shortage, um, how, yeah. how are you finding engineers and, and people in this climate? It's, it's very difficult. Yeah. It, yeah, no, I, I'll be I'll be honest, Andy. It is, and you know, however, it's changing uh, because of all the different you know challenges that the as a you know as a whole the technology landscape is having. Right, so mm -hmm. it's changing now. It's changing now. The other thing we do see is that from you know from the technology space, we are seeing a very big you know uh, interest from the engineers to mm -hmm. do something meaningful and contribute in a meaningful way. It's, le it's become less about, you know, the technology that we are creating and more and more about how does that technology impact and change the world. So yeah. in, in, that, uh, in that context, we have been in a very fortunate space where we can 
provide our team the opportunity to contribute in a meaningful way and see their work impact you know hundreds of lives immediately. So I'll say we have been fortunate, but we are expanding the team at a pretty rapid pace to meet the growing uh, customer demand and uh, essentially help roll out different robotic solutions across all of North America. And and that's great. I I love small businesses and and and, and I love seeing businesses grow. You know, I mean, small and medium businesses are are the backbone of our economy, right? So I I love seeing that. Um, now, uh, Bro, your CTO and co-founder, um, let's let's talk a little bit about company culture and team environment, right? Uh, Bro has said that regular open communication and thoughtful knowledge sharing is one of the most beneficial things that you guys do at Gray Matter Robotics. So, how do you make sure that great communication and knowledge sharing is happening within the company? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question, and this is extremely important, especially for you know uh, when you are doing something new and novel, and you are researching and pushing the barriers of technology. We 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 are very diligent about sharing information across the whole company. All our we are, I would say, if I take a step back. We are extremely customer focused. We are hyper focused on customers and solving their problems. Our whole engineering team and you know the whole team beyond engineering, everyone knows that customers come first and they get the highest priority. We are not here to build any technology or any fancy technology for the sake of technology. We are here to solve problem first and walk backwards to build the technology that can enable us to solve those problems for our customers. And we, we communicate that very clearly. We communicate, uh, all our engineers know how the you know sales and marketing functions are happening. All our sales folks know what are the, you know, very clearly, what are the limitations of current technologies and what's mm-hmm. the roadmap and all that. Within the whole engineering team, uh, it's cross-functional engineering team because robotics, as you know, it's a multidisciplinary field. Everyone yeah. has that open channel of communication and work together to solve some of this uh, deep technology problems that can eventually create meaningful solutions and add value, really strong value for our customers. The other thing we do, we also facilitate uh, the engineers communicate very openly with our customers. We, we, as I was mentioning, the whole robot as a service model, we provide premium support to our customers. So all of our engineers actually take turn in some support shift where they observe how the end users are using the system, working with the system, and that really helps all of us to understand how we can create a great product that's made and designed for the software operators who has no knowledge of robotics or engineering or AI, right? This is someone to whom this solution needs to be like, a, you know, be an, essentially be an appliance where they can bring apart, press a button, go back to doing some other high value task while the robot can take care of the tedious and algorithmic standing operation. So I would say, you know, being hyper-focused on customers, communicating mm-hmm. that very clearly and openly across the team, and breeding and, you know, helping to groom the culture of problem-solving and taking a first-principle approach to problem-solving, that has really helped us to build a great team and culture. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, I, I think that's very important to think about the big picture and what we're doing. And, and you know, what, I've, I've dealt with many, many customers uh, as well. And one of the most important thing is, you know, you have to be realistic and set the right expectation yes. when it comes to uh, sharing information with customers, right? Um, you know, you, you, you want to under promise and over deliver as opposed to over promise and under deliver, right? So that's good. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, in, in speaking with you, you're very passionate uh, about, you know, helping out fellow humans, improving, you know, I, I know you are very passionate with causes like animal welfare, um, human rights, poverty alleviation, and things like that. Are there any uh, particular pet projects and things that you're working on that we uh, that that we should know about? No, not at the moment. My at the moment, okay. my complete focus is on gray matter. However, our team 
often has certain, you know, uh, they work on certain fun projects every year. And in this Thanksgiving, they actually, you know, one of our engineers came up with the idea that, hey, how about we create a system that can roast a turkey? And, you know, oh, that's... they essentially put a turkey on a turntable, put a flamethrower on the robot, and use the same software and the technology to essentially create, instead of scan and sand, create scan and roast and roast a turkey. So we do some <laughs> fun projects in the team. That's fantastic. How did the turkey turn out? Did you taste it? We did not. It looked good, <laughs> but <laughs> we were scared to try it out. <laughs> uh, I'd love to see a video of that. That sounds, yeah. that sounds amazing. <laughs> Uh, well, Arian, thank you very much for your time today. I know you, uh, and you know, running a company is always busy and there's, there's never really downtime. So I really appreciate you taking the time and joining me today on our podcast. And, um, just a, just a last, uh, last question that I have for you. Where, where do you see, uh, gray matter robotics going in, in the next five to 10 years? Well, thank you very much for having me, Andy. And in the next five, you know, near term and long term, in near term, our focus is being the solution provider for, you know, automation in the surface finishing and surface treatment space. And, you know, essentially creating, creating the de facto standard for some of these advanced solutions that can really help manufacturers to A, improve the quality of lives of their workforce, and B, help them to bridge the gap between their capacity and demand and enhance their productivity. Long term, we are going to be also focusing on adjacent applications, adjacent industries to essentially keep on pushing the boundaries and create a broader impact. Fantastic. And, you know, I, I really love what you guys are doing. Best of luck. And again, at any time I can help with, with anything, just please let me know. Uh, it's been my pleasure to, to speak to you today. And thank you very much for spending time with me this morning. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Andy.